The Attractor Factor, 5 Easy Steps for Creating Wealth or Anything Else from the Inside Out. Joe Vitale. Spirit is substance, which forms itself according to your demands, and must have a pattern from which to work. A pan of dough is as willing to be formed into bread as biscuit. It makes a little difference to spirit, what we demand. Francis Larimar Warner, Our Invisible Supply, Part 1, 1907. Got money worries? A little birdie just came my way and mentioned a deep soulful desire of yours. Heavens, no, not that one. She said that you'd be eternal, eternally grateful if, once and for all, you never had to worry about money again. Well, I couldn't resist. Wish granted. You never, ever have to worry about money again. Anything else? Anything at all. The Universe. www.tut.com Within each life lies the causes of whatever enters it. F.W. Sears, How to Attract Success in 1914. The Attractor Factor. Miracles Never Stop. More miracles have happened to me since the writing of this little booklet in 1997 that evolved into the what you are now holding. Here's a few of them. When I first wrote this book, it described as the car of my dreams. The car of my dreams at that time was a Saturn. Now I've upgraded my dream car. Now I'm driving a BMW Z3 2.8 Roadster. Never in my life had I had so much fun driving. As I grew up in my life, I became bolder. About going for my dreams, I also naturally wanted a different vehicle, and that led to my Z3, which symbolizes the major changes in my life. And it is a hoot to drive as well. You truly can have anything you can imagine. When I first wrote this book, I was still married to Marion, whom I'd been with for more than 20 years. Since we decided that we had grown apart, there was nothing negative about the experience of the decision at all. Marion decided she preferred being alone, and I decided to look for another partner. I found one too, Nerissa, whom I'm deeply in love with. I'm still friends with Marion. Both of us and both are now in my heart, but I'm a lucky man. Major changes in my life can truly be easy and effortless. And when I wrote this book, I made a goal that I wanted a passive income. I wanted money to come to me easily and effortlessly, effortlessly always and consistently. No matter where or what I was doing, I was then to lead and led to meet Mark Joyner, the CEO of Aesop Marketing, who asked me if he could put one of my books online on ebook. I was skeptical and gave him the hypnotic writing, a manuscript I wrote many years ago. Mark put it online and marketed it and sales blew off my socks. And even now, years in the book went online for www.hypnoticwriting.com. Orders were still coming in, and since the book was in print, stock, mail, or money was in passive income, every month I received a check, sometimes for staggering amounts. And since now, over a dozen e-books out there, including the bestseller, How to Create Your Own E-Book, in only seven days at www.sevendayebook.com. The checks are even bigger. Now I smile a lot. And I know that when you set in an intention, you set the forces of life that bring it, to, bring it to you, and you to it. And when I first wrote this book, I was living in Houston, Texas after I met Nerissa. I moved to Austin, and they began the process of attracting our dream home. After a few months, we found a beautiful two-acre story of hill country property wandering wild with rabbits and outside pool between Austin and San Antonio in a small spiritual artistic community called Wimberley, Texas. Finding this home was a matter of having a clear image of what I wanted while following every intuitive impulse I had. The result was a miracle. I could go on for an example. Man, I'd studied over 20 years ago. Dr. Robert Anthony, his famous books and tapes changed my life. After I came under the early versions of my material, he read it and contacted me. Now the man who was once in my gurus is now the one of my business partners. I ended up producing, recording, and marketing his terrific audio programs, Beyond Positive Thinking. I think it's the greatest self-improvement material of all time, and I'm involved with it. Attraction works. I just sat down with Nerissa and talked to her about the ongoing miracles in my life. And it happened to you all the time, she said. She mentioned just the other day I wanted a book to flight, take a flight in Ohio to see family. Tickets were nearly $1,000. And I simply expected her to get a better deal, be willing to accept the one going fair. And when I called the airline back, she told me that enough frequent flyers would get her both tickets for just over $100. Way cool. And Nerissa reminded me at the time that I wanted to complete my collection of rare books of P.T. Barnum. And man, I'd studied and written a book about. I found the last book I needed. But my intuition said not to pay the high price bestseller was asking. I let it go and I waited for a few days later. Bookseller lowered the price. That's almost unheard of. And yes, I bought the book. And she reminded me that the time I looked for the book in nearly seven years, I couldn't find it. I gave up. But I decided I would attract it. And somehow, some way, then, out of the blue, an email friend in Canada wrote me and said that they had the book. I begged to buy it. He declined. A few days later, he suddenly decided just to send me the book at no charge. And she remembered that a year ago or so, when I couldn't find a friend of mine that I loved and missed so much, I gave up hired and private. I gave up and hired a private investigator. He couldn't find my friend either. I was, I quit looking and I made a decision to attract her back into my life. And the one day, simply following my intuition, I walked right up to a friend at a yoga class and I found her without even breaking a sweat. Nerissa also reminded me to tell you that 
what happened just yesterday. I was writing in this very preface. I have been practicing a Sedona method for months now and a very simple method of releasing my emotions and negative experiences in a way from which you are being happy right now. And it's like a method which I told many people about, though, in my monthly Ease newsletter. I was reading a book by Lester Levinson, a founder of the Sedona method, just yesterday morning in an easy chair, reading, feeling happy, wondering how I might learn about the Sedona and Lester and remembering, gee, it sure would be nice to meet s to some Sedona people and learn about the way that they do. The same day I checked into email and delighted surprise there was a message from a director of Sedona Institute who had heard me through the grapevine wanted to talk about me and wanted to talk to me about how I can help and promote the website of HTTP www.sedona.com. Wow. And then there was a countless times I wanted more money for something or other and I got the brainstorm and pulls the abundance so fast that one time when I needed a raise for twenty thousand dollars I almost led a seminar for, seminar for spiritual marketing to get it and instead I felt like I was guiding it to anyone who would sign up for the online to take an e-class I announced that the class would only be done by email would last only five weeks and cost up to fifteen hundred dollars per person people fifteen people still signed up bringing me the whopping sum of money in one day very nice and since that I taught my e-class systems to others and I made upwards of a quarter of a million dollars per year with it and cost in most cases received almost half as a payment for my consulting you know I like that now you've had miracles happen all the time Narissa repeated but well, why don't you think that is and why would you think that is and I certainly wasn't always like that it wasn't because you practice the attractor factor, she explained. The attractor factor. You make yourself a magnet for whatever you want. And once you decide that you want something, you get it. Often, almost instantly. There's no question about it. And if you had to document all the miracles that occurred just in your life alone because of the attractor factor, I never stopped writing this book and never got around to releasing it to public. My point is this. The five-step formula you are about to discover works. And because it works, I have to, and I want you to have it. I once told Narissa that there is an easy path through life and a hard path. And once... I first met her. She was crawling up to the rocky side of the mountain. I pointed out that there's an escalator through life you can take too, and through the hard path or the easy path, and it's all your choice. When I first met Narissa, she was unhappy, battling lawsuits against construction workers who messed up her roof, fighting with her mother almost every day, hating her job and more. Within a few months of discovering the attractor factor, she ended the lawsuit, found common grounds with her mother, and quit her job. She has two e-books out and growing internet business, and she lives with me in her country in her country estate. She says that she's happier now than any other time in her life, ever. Again, there's a rocky road through life, and there's an escalator. Which do you prefer? The attractive factor shows you the way to glide through life. Why not step up and enjoy the ride? Remember that things are symbols, and these symbolizes, and the thing that symbolizes is more important than the symbol itself. Remember that things are symbols, and that the thing symbolized is more important than the symbol itself. Judge Thomas Trowin, quoted in Attaining Your Desires, by Genevieve Berend. What are you dismissing? I had lunch with a dear friend the other day. Although I enjoyed the company and the food, I left feeling a little lower in energy. When I thought about it, I realized that my friend was brilliant at dismissing every book, concept, guru, self-help method, or healing approach he had ever read or heard about. He was not directly negative or purposely critical. He uncertainly, he, instant, he, he, he sincerely wanted something that would work for his life, but was unconsciously dismissing everything that came his way. At one point, I told him about a spiritual teacher that I had studied over two decades. I told him about what people would say that my teacher was obviously enlightened. He radiated it. My friend cut and saying, Well, I'm sure that there are a lot of people who saw that guru and didn't think that he was smarter than any other paper bag. Well, my friend is right, but my friend is also unhappy. And I think there was a lesson here. When we dismiss people's ideas because the entire world doesn't agree with them, then we get be, them. We get to be right. But also, we get to stay empty inside by dismissing what could work. We dismiss our own growth. We dismiss what's possible. It doesn't matter if the book that you read and love is loved by anyone else. It doesn't matter if the teacher that you admire is admired by anyone else. It doesn't matter if the healing method that worked for you doesn't work for anybody else. What matters is you, your happiness, your health, your healing, your well-being. The truth is, no, method works for everyone. No teacher is right for everyone. No book is going to inspire everybody. It all comes from within. You are the first and the final authority on your life. Rather than dismissing what is possible so that you can be right, why don't you accept so that you can grow? Dismissing is often a way of deflecting the messages. It's a self-defense mechanism. If you dismiss the book, idea, or method offered to you, then you get to be right and stay right where you are. Dr. Richard Gillett, writing of his wonderful book, Change Your Mind, Change Your World, states, Disapproval is surprisingly the most reliable indication of a hidden belief system. Quite often, the only way that we disguise beliefs shown to themselves is through moments of emotional judgment or disapproval. 
all the successful people that I know have accepted new tools into their lives over the years, spent thousands of dollars on personal growth and self-study and never regretted any of it. The key is not dismissing or disapproving, but digesting. For example, Nerissa and I had dinner with my friends recently, and one friend was complaining about her job. From other perspective, there was no other way around a misery. She, misery she felt at, at her job. A bad boss, bad hours, bad pay, you name it. It was all bad. Later, we were all joined by other friends as a chance that would have it, and new friends had connections where the complaining friend worked. We had gave an unhappy friend a name and it said that we could help resolve her issues. We went on to say that this was a connection was a supervisor, head of many departments, and could possibly resolve whatever was wrong. I was stunned. So was Nerissa. We were seeing magic happen right before our eyes. But what did our unhappy friend do with her new lead and new hope? She dismissed it. She didn't write down the name of the number or show any signs of something wonderful that had occurred. Do you see how this works? Sometimes we can self-sabotage the things that we say and want. We simply dismiss the good. People often write and ask me about one simple product they can get that will transform their lives. When I tell them I said, loved Dr. Robert Anthony's material that I financed, recorded and now marketed his Beyond Positive Thinking CD, set they are sold. They go from www.beyondpositivethinking.com and buy it. Yet some people complain, it costs $99. Ah, oh, of course it costs money, and that's incredibly low for the studio quality life-changing set of six audios. Are you going to pay it, or do you want it? Are you going to dismiss the greatest self-help material of all time, or do you want good to say that you seek, or don't you? Let me end this with an, another example. Yesterday I received a letter in an email about a new audio program about dissolving illusions. I read the piece, but dismissed it. I figured it was simply stuff that I had already heard about before, probably even recorded elsewhere myself. Then today I got another mailing. This time it was a form of different source selling the exact same audio program. I read it over closely and I thought, this is interesting. But I bet there's little new in it. And then I placed the mailing aside. An hour or so went by as if I was reviewing a very chapter that you're reading right now. I suddenly realized that I was doing the very thing that I'm warning you not to do. I was dismissing the opportunity to learn. I dug out the mailing, filled out the order form, and dropped it in the mail. And the audios are on the way. The point was not to be... It was not for you to buy everything that comes your way, but for you not to dismiss everything that comes your way. Sometimes a dismissal is a mask, and if you self-sabotage work keeping you where you are at, to grow, it'll keep you where, you where you are at. And to grow, you must be open. Again, you are a final authority on your own life, and tune into yourself and do what's right for you. And as you do this, be alert in those times when you may be dismissing the gift to come your way. Let your guard down and let life in. If we don't like what's happening to us in the world, all we have to do is change our consciousness and the world out there changes for us. Lester Levingson, Keys to the Ultimate Freedom, 1993. How to Attract Money what do you do, I asked. I was standing in the line of 700 people in a hotel in Seattle, waiting to spend a day listening to an author and spiritual teacher. I do energy work, the woman beside me replied. It's hard to explain. It's different for each person. Do you have a business card? No, she said, slightly embarrassed. I was shocked. Let me ask you a question, I began. There's over 700 potential clients here for you, and why don't you at least have business cards? A woman beside her smile told her, You were just hit by an angel. I'm not an angel, but I was curious about... The business woman, and when she was missing a huge marketing opportunity, as I talked to her a few more of the 700 people at this event, I realized all the people here were in business for themselves, and all they needed help was in marketing themselves. That's when it dawned on me that I could write a concise handbook of spiritually based manifest, and no one else seemed better qualified than an author of the AMA, Complete Guide to Small Business Advertising for the American Marketing Association. I had over 15 years experience in metaphysics and spirituality. I've interviewed many self-help spokespeople, had some of them as my clients. Besides, I've already created and tested a secret five-step process for attracting anything you want. I also know those 700 people, the seven are represented a still larger group of people who need help with their businesses and, their way, and with their lives. I further knew that they were all doing something inside themselves that was creating their outer results. In other words, their inner state of being was creating their business or lack of it. Put more simply, the woman who didn't have her business cards had an inner insecurity about her business that showed up in her life not having business cards. Her attractive factor was attracting no business. And taking this logic a step further in the direction, I wanted to take this book. This woman was so truly clear about her business, but she wouldn't even need business cards. Business wouldn't just come to her and in inner spirit. Her attracting factor would do her would do her marketing. That's what this book will reveal. I've learned that there are several human beings, not human doings. When you reach a clear inner state of being from which and you service the world, the world will almost come to you. When you're almost clear about the car, person, house, job, or anything that you want, you will start to attract that into your world. As, you, as a successful person said, angels now hand on my business cards. 
Confused? That's okay. Therapist, author, friendly Mandy Evans said, Confusion is the wonderful state of mind right before clarity. Confusion is the wonderful state of mind right before clarity. Angels, now hand out my business cards. Fundamentals of Prosperities. Fundamentals of Prosperities. Maybe the following story will give you a glimpse of what I'm talking about in the set stage for what is to follow.